Sonia, but I'm leading the service today, and Tony is leading the musicians and singers. 
And we're also very, very pleased to welcome once again the lovely Reverend Judith Sumner, who will be preaching this morning and celebrating Holy Communion too. Today is the Sunday next before Lent, and we'll be thinking too about the transfiguration of Christ and what it means to our lectionary readings, a video, and of course, Judith's sermon. So, a few moments of quiet. And we begin our worship this morning with the words on the screen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. And as always, we light the candle for Ukraine. But I think we will also be remembering the people and praying for the people of Syria and Turkey. Prayer for peace in Ukraine, for Turkey and for Syria. God of compassion, have mercy this day on the people of Ukraine, Turkey and Syria. Restore to all of them the gift of peace. Grant wisdom to the governments of the world and bring good in the midst of evil and suffering. For the sake of Jesus Christ, your Son, who gave his life to bring peace to your world. Amen. And we're going to sing in a moment. And our first song really helps us think about the light of Christ and what that means in a world that can be very dark and full of despair. To follow God's word directs us to be beacons of light for others as we reflect the hope, the peace, and the joy that comes from God, and only from God. So we stand to sing, if you're able, Christ be our light. <coughs> Oh, 
Transfiguration of Christ when Jesus took Peter, James, and John up to the high mountain. Mm -hmm. And as it's a family communion, we thought we'd share a short video which tells the story very, very simply, but hopefully will start us thinking about what the story might mean for us. So, Jacob, can we have the video now, please? Thank you. is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. One day, Jesus took Peter James and John up a high mountain to pray. As Jesus was praying, he was transformed so that his face shined like the sun and his clothes became white as light. Suddenly Moses and Elijah appeared and began talking with Jesus about how he would leave from this world. Peter didn't know what to say and they were all afraid. So he said, Um, if you remember, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But as Peter was speaking, a bright cloud came over them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. Listen to him. The disciples were terrified and fell face down on the ground. Jesus came over and touched them. He said, Get up, don't be afraid. And when the disciples looked up, Moses and Elijah were gone. Come on, guys. As they went back down the mountain, Jesus told them not to tell anyone what they saw until they saw that he was raised from the dead. Okay. So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. from Judy. So now is our time for the confession and the words are on the screen. God be gracious to us and bless us and make your face shine upon us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May your ways be known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so receive these words of God's forgiveness. May Almighty God, who sent Jesus into the world to save you, forgive you and assure you of his love and bring you peace now and forever. Amen. And now we continue our worship with the hymn, Lord Be My Vision. Thank you. 
of scripture. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. <coughs> he received honour and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory saying, This is my son whom I love and with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets, through the human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Hazel. And um, our Gospel reading is Matthew 17, verses 1 to 9, 
and that can be found on page 694 if you're following it in your Bibles. The Transfiguration. <laughs> After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. And just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And while he was speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. <coughs> and I'd like to invite Judith to share with us her sermon. <coughs> Let us pray. Loving Lord, as we ponder on these words uh, for us today, we pray that they may both inspire and challenge us in our lives of faith. Amen. Amen. As Peter saw Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus, he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter wanted to stand still in that moment, um, and that's the bit of the transfiguration story that I've been pondering on this week. But I want to begin with a story of my own. We take home communions uh, to people in our parish, as I'm sure happens here too. And I have a little communion set with all the things that, that I need. And so when I go either to a home or a hospital um, bedside, I would ask for a little table um, and then set out uh, a cloth and the wafers, a little chalice of wine. And I also, in my set, uh, have two small candles and a cross. And um, when I first had that set, I think I thought, I'm not sure whether I'll, I'll use those, it feels a bit too much. But, um, but I did. And I remember sometimes thinking it looks a bit cluttered on the table. Uh, sometimes I used to think, I don't think I can get all this on the table because it's too small. Uh, and sometimes it just looks really unusual in the midst of uh, the house's furniture or in the hospital particularly. But one day, and it was a busy day, I'd rushed in with home communion for one of the ladies I take to regularly. We had a chat, and aware of time, and probably a bit too quickly, I got everything out of my home communion kit, arranged them on the little table that she had. And then I lit the candles. And for a moment, there was just stillness and silence. And we shared that moment as we looked at the candles. And somehow, the candles changed everything for me that day. They slowed me right down and made me want to stay really in that moment. I remember thinking, I don't really want to start the service yet, but I don't want to say any words. This is a moment. And it was a moment shared as well. Now I can make an ex attempt to explain why that was special. It might be that those candles linked me with the roots of my faith. Uh, when I was quite young, I carried a candle 
in my home church where I grew up uh, for many years for the gospel reading. It might be that the different light those candles offered into the room, that warm, flickering, vulnerable light of a candle that just always feels special, it might have been that. It might be that for me at that moment there were a reminder of Jesus as the light of the world and central to my faith. But actually, that day for me, those candles offered something beyond words and beyond explanation. But they offered something that perhaps continues to support, enrich and nurture my faith as I journey through life. And I wondered as I was thinking about the transfiguration, whether perhaps it was a glimpse of transfiguration in some way, and perhaps that that glimpse of transfiguration Transfiguration has changed me. A glimpse of transfiguration. Well, transfiguration is not a word we use very often in our everyday language, but the Greek uh, translation uh, means uh, meta, beyond, and morphu. So, metamorphosis is another word that's very close to transfiguration. And we might not speak of it much in terms of our faith, but I do wonder whether we experience glimpses of transfiguration in our lives all the time. And that maybe those moments that we want to hold on to, where we recognise and treasure uh, just glimpses of something beyond, something of the kingdom, um, and perhaps uh, help, can ha help us to uh, be closer to what happened to Peter, James and John in that story. Closer, maybe, than we imagine. So let's look at the story again. I did love the film. <laughs> that was fantastic. Jesus led the three disciples, those closest to him, perhaps, up the mountain. And once there, Jesus is transfigured. His face shines like the sun, and his clothes become dazzling white. And Peter doesn't say, what is going on, Jesus? Why are you dazzling white? He doesn't say, aren't those two Old Testament prophets, Moses and Elijah, and what are they doing here? And he doesn't say, what is going on? At that point... There's something about that moment that makes Peter hold and want to treasure it. And he said, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you remember, they then are very frightened when they hear the voice of God. But at that moment, Peter says, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter senses that that moment is precious and he wants to stay in it. Now I wonder whether the transfiguration gave those disciples something that one commentator calls a glimpse of the truth about Jesus and we can make attempts to explain why. It took them right back to the heart of their Jewish scriptures with the presence of Moses and Elijah and particularly echoes of Moses' face shining like the sun. It was a glimpse of transfiguration that validated Jesus as God's son, with God's love shining through. It was a glimpse perhaps of potential as they recognised Jesus as Messiah, the one that they had been waiting for, the one to fulfil fill the bigger story of salvation, and that was a sign of great hope for their future. So we can think about all those things and wonder whether that's why Peter said those words, let's stay here, let me make these tents and stay. But actually Peter doesn't explain anything at that time. All we know is that at that moment they wanted to stay where they were, but of course they don't. They hear God's voice saying, listen to him, it's a moving on. This is about uh, something that will encourage and, and empower them. And so they return down the mountain. Jesus tells them not to 
to share that until after his death and resurrection, so they move on. But they obviously don't forget. And I wonder whether supported, enriched, and nurtured by all they've witnessed, it changes them. That transfiguration changed not just Jesus, but it changes them. So 2,000 years later, what does that mean for us today? So I wonder whether in the midst of the busyness, in the midst of all the noise and clamour of life, I wonder what glimpses of transfiguration you've maybe held and treasured. A time perhaps when God's love has really shone. A time when the truth of faith felt particularly close to you. A time you wanted to remain in, to stay, to hold and treasure. Those times might be during something that you expect, perhaps in the service at church, in a worship song that you particularly relate to, a hymn that just touches your soul. A Bible verse, perhaps, that you've always held close to your heart. A prayer that you hear or say that speaks words of your inmost longing. But it may also be in the unexpected, perhaps in nature, the way the sun shines through the trees one day when you're walking home. It might be when you stumble across a cluster of snowdrops hidden in a hedge. It might be a piece of music, a painting, or an encounter with someone else. Perhaps an encounter of compassion or kindness where God's love is shining through. So I want to leave you with kind of four things to ponder on. Uh, which I know are on the, the sheet that I'm not sure, do you get that at the end of the service? Or that, I have to apologise, I'm a great sermon writer that goes on and on until literally the time I leave my house. So if these points are slightly different from what's on the sheet, please forgive me. So my four things to ponder on this morning. Firstly, how can we hold on to those precious glimpses of transfiguration that we maybe have had or have in our lives. Do we write them down? Do we tell anyone? Do we share it? I wonder whether as we approach Lent and have that time, a time to really reflect on our faith, maybe that's a good opportunity uh, to bring to mind, to think about those things that have been those glimpses of transfiguration for us, us personally, maybe us as a church too. Secondly, how can those glimpses of transfiguration inspire us in our faith journey? That day, the candle slowed me down. I was in a rush. I often feel that I'm a, a bit of a swan and I'm quite good at looking as if I'm taking my time when underneath I'm rushing. The candles slowed me down, they helped me to know what was important in that moment. They helped to ground and root me in my faith. Thirdly, do these glimpses of transfiguration help us in times of doubt or distress? And how can we remember them and hold them? and bring them to mind to shine in our hearts through the darkness as we sang in that beautiful hymn at the beginning of the service. How can we allow them by bringing them back to mind to shine in our hearts through the darkness? And finally, I wonder how we, you as a church here, can be a place where those glimpses of transfiguration are held, treasured, shared, Passed on, perhaps, in our services, worship, in the cafe, the work that you do with children and families in the community around here, in our personal encounters with our neighbours and our friends. How can we be, as church, as individuals, glimpses, perhaps, of transfiguration, allowing people to see the love of God shining through? The story of transfiguration can seem a story from long ago, rather unusual and otherworldly. 
And yet I wonder whether as we experience these glimpses of transfiguration in our lives and recognise perhaps the way in which they can support, enrich and nurture us in our faith, the way in which they may change us, then we can seek to be a people and a church where glimpses of transfiguration are offered to others. When we do all those things and recognise those things, perhaps we are closer to what happened to Peter, James and John, more than we imagine. Amen. Thank you so much, Judith. Lots to think about there. And we all wish that we, we wish and we pray for glimpses of transformation. And so now we come to the time of our creed. Let's say the creed together as we affirm our faith. You can stand or sit as you wish. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit. And um, our next song is going to be the days of Elijah and a song of hope and trust in the power and assurance that God gives us. Thank you. These are the days of Elijah, preparing the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant, Moses, righteous and being restored. And though these are days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sorrow, till we are a voice in the desert, crying the day. notices and sharing so if anyone's got anything that they would like to share something that has happened during the week maybe one of those glimpses I don't know but anything you'd like to share we'll give a notice so anyone like to come forward I know Caroline's got one thing yeah you come 
It's more in the way of, of a notice, really, and then ask. Um, so uh, many of you um, know about the questionnaires we're doing as part of this listening exercise. Those of you who kindly offered to have discussions with people um, have been notified by email um, with, the, with the questionnaires there. Um, of course, anybody um, is welcome to fill one in. There are the questionnaires outside. Um, and there are two formats of it. One is for those more familiar with the church um, and geared up to them. The other questionnaire is um, for people who we serve in the community who aren't perhaps quite so familiar with our church services. So they're both out there on the, the table at the back in, in the North Egg. So do pick one up. We're hoping that we can get those completed if at all possible, and I know it's a big ask by um, March the 6th, the reason for that is, is we're trying to work to a timeline that the diocese has suggested. Um, it's a target timeline, so you know, if we don't achieve it, we'll, it, we'll modify it, but we are trying to work to it. So we're, we're trying to get the parish profile um, in draft form, largely drafted through March, so that we can spend April reviewing it and pulling it together so that we can go into the meeting at the early part of May with the diocese and our patron to discuss the profile so we can then actually advertise the post um, in May. So that's the sort of timetable we're working to um, and that's why we've set the date of March the 6th. If you can't if you'd like to join in this listening exercise um, so that we can understand better who we are and where God is guiding us to be, and you can't do it by March the 6th, do, do talk to Lynn or myself um, and we'll see how we can uh, flex things. But if you can do it by then, it would be great. Also, just ask for your prayers. The PCC have a meeting this coming Thursday. Ask for your prayers for that meeting. One of the key things that will happen at that meeting is a decision about which two members of the PCC will act as the representatives for this selection process. So if you can pray for God's hand to be on, on that decision, that would be fantastic. And just um, one small thing, the vicarage, as I mentioned uh, last week, the vicarage is being rented out. The new tenants will come in on Thursday, uh, the 23rd. So um, if you see them in the, in the grounds, uh, please please welcome them. I, I don't know their names, but um, we'll find that out when they when they arrive. That's all. Thank you. So lots of things happening and a lot of work to be done, but it's all part of the process and God is with us through all of it. Uh, is there anyone else that would like to give a notice? We've got lots of birthdays, I'm told. Oh, another birthday. Come on, all together. I know Rebecca Saturday. Evelyn, remind me. Emma. Emma. So, Rebecca, Emma. Emma. All around now, aren't they? Anyone? Mm. Well, just... Well, they're, they're not here. They're not here. Okay. Right. Rebecca and Emma, we'll do them together. <laughs> birthdays are happy days for loving and sharing. celebration. Um, so. Oh, it's Caroline. Caroline is leading our prayer, so it's our time of intercession. So please come. So as we pray, there will be um, pictures on the screen. If you don't find them helpful, just look away. Father. We give you thanks and praise. We bring our prayers to you, knowing that the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You revealed your glory to Jesus' terrified followers and allowed them to hear your voice from the awesome cloud. Remove the veil from our eyes and ears to listen to the voice of Jesus and live our lives as a statement of your truth. 
through your Holy Spirit, transform us into his image and clothe us with honour and majesty. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Father, you are an ever-present help in time of need. We bring to you the people of Syria and Turkey. Be a comfort to those who are grieving and traumatised, for those whose homes have been destroyed and livelihoods ruined. We ask you to speed access for help to get to the right places. Strengthen and keep safe all those involved in searching for survivors and undertaking the clean-up operation. Give them resilience. And we pray that shelter, clean water, food and medical care may be provided quickly. Help us to be generous with what we have for the sake of the suffering. And give wisdom to governments and aid agencies from all around the world as they seek to help. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. Father, you created the heaven and the earth and saw that it was good. We thank you that we can catch glimpses of your glory as we see the beauty of spring emerging, new life beginning all around us, the fresh green shoots slowly emerging the snowdrops and daffodils coming into flower. We ask your forgiveness for the way in which we have regarded the earth our own, taking more than our fair share of your beautiful world and failing to be good stewards. We know that through Jesus Christ you can transfigure and restore all things. And so we pray for justice and fairness for those worst hit by climate change. We ask you would forgive our blindness and open our eyes, that you would grant us clear thinking, right action and a gentle lifestyle. And we pray for all world leaders that you will place on their hearts the needs of those most vulnerable to climate change and that they would have the courage to make right decisions. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. <coughs> Father, you wonderfully transfigured Jesus with a glorious light. So we bring before you our church here in Tilehurst and ask that you transform our darkest places with your light. We pray for every member of this church. Give each one of us a loving attitude towards each other. May we reflect your glory and grace. Bless each one of us this coming week, particularly Pip and Bill and Lottie, who are on this week's prayer list. And we uphold before you the PCC and ask that they may listen to you and be guided by you in their decisions, particularly this week as they meet on Thursday to appoint two representatives to act for them in selecting a new vicar. And we pray that even now you will be working in the heart and mind of our new vicar so that an appointment will be made in line with your choice and we will be open to welcome them. And we ask that you will be an ever guiding force at St Catherine's as we listen amongst ourselves and to the community as to who we are and where we are headed. We pray, Lord, that your wonderful light will transfigure this church 
so that those in the community <coughs> may see we are transformed by Christ and be drawn into Jesus' loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Yeah. Loving God, we pray for all the sick in body, mind or spirit, that they may know your power to heal. We pray for those in need in our community, the housebound, the elderly, those bound by addiction, those anxious as to how to make ends meet. Sustain them and give them hope that they find in you a new way and life everlasting. And we bring before you those who specifically asked for our prayers. Pray for Libby's friend who's undergoing eye problems. And we pray for Marie recovering from surgery. And Lord, we thank you for all that have gone before us and the inspiration they are to us. And we trust that you will transform them in your glorious kingdom. And in a moment of silence, we remember those who are on our hearts today. Lord, in your mercy. God of our mountaintops and our valleys, as we go into next week, may we reflect your love in our community, our church and our families, so that the world can see that we are transformed by Christ so that others are drawn into Jesus' loving care. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. mountains and glimpses and our hymn now is how lovely on the mountains are the feet of him so please stand if you're able <laughs>
so we come to our time of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. You opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Our Father, who do this in remembrance of his body is the bread of life. And of supper, taking a cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and the drink in the Holy Ghost, make us one in Christ, our God is in the Lord. With your whole church around the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, the Son in the Christ. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done.
Let us pray. For bringing us together in love. Thank you. For feeding us with your very self. Thank you. For the power of your spirit. Thank you. So our final song to start this, this morning is I'm building a people of power. Would you stand if you're able? For I'm better blessing. May Christ's holy, healing and enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you, with those you love and with those you pray for always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. 